<laughs> All right. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 43rd AEE International Awards Ceremony. This is, of course, our first ever virtual AEE Awards show, and we are so grateful you have taken the time to be here with us today. I am Jeff Civilico. I had the honor of performing at the 41st AEE Awards Ceremony in 2018. I believe that was in Charlotte, North Carolina. If you remember me from that uh, event, let me know in the chat. I am honored to be back with you today, serving as your virtual MC. Now, I am coming to you live from Show Creators Studios in Las Vegas, and I could not be more excited. I will be assisted today by our technical team. We have Amanda here with us, uh, as well as our engineer, Travis. They are going to be working hard behind the scenes to make sure all of you are sounding great and looking great. Speaking of looking great, I have to say I am so impressed by how many of you dressed up today. We're virtual. You could still be in your pajamas, but no, you went all out. Bill, you look like you're on the red carpet there um, in front of your step and repeat. I love it. Looking fabulous in your tuxedo. Uh, we've got a bunch of people in tuxes. John, I love the microphone. John uh, Feldman rocking the Britney Spears microphone. Very nice. John, start busting out some dance moves for us, please. <laughs> I don't know what time is it over there. There you go. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, John. Oh, no. John, I immediately regret asking that. I love, I love you're in the spirit. We're all in the spirit. I'm in the spirit over here uh, in Las Vegas. It's 6 a.m., uh, but here we go. A little, uh, little, little champagne. Perfect. Uh, by the way, guys, I got to say, I, I went all out with the, uh, with the outfit. I was very tempted to rock the tuxedo tee. Uh, but I figured I should class it up a little bit. Uh, now, of course, our first choice would have been to be together in person for this event. Just like always, large ballroom, great food, great conversation, and endless bottles of wine. But the 2020 COVID pandemic, of course, had other plans. But we are not going to let that stop us from what is really the most important aspect of this award ceremony, which is coming together together as a community to recognize, to honor, and to celebrate our peers. Now, I saw in the chat already people telling me where you're coming in from. I love that. You can see, folks, we have people literally tuning in from around the world for this event. So go ahead. If you haven't done so already, tell me right now in the chat, where are you right now around the world and what time is it? I already told you I'm in Las Vegas. It's 610 AM here. We've got Korea in the house. Good morning from Korea. Oh, wow. Toronto, Ohio, <laughs> Iowa, Cape Town, South Africa, Atlanta, Jordan, South Vancouver, BC, Brazil, Alabama, Kuwait. So incredible. Kenya, Indiana, Michigan, Maryland, Nigeria. Unbelievable. Oh, it's Chia from Lebanon. Did you see that? He, of course I remember you, Chia. Okay, so he said, Jeff, I'm not sure if you remember me, but it's Chia from Le Chia, I could never forget you, sir. You, you made quite an impression on me. Switzerland, uh, Georgia, Jersey, <laughs> really incredible folks. Again, uh, such a, a truly international organization. We know it's different time zones. You're coming in all over the world. We appreciate, no matter where you're joining us from today, we, are, we appreciate you being here. Uh, we're grateful that you have taken some time to be with us for this very special uh, first ever virtual event. Now, we do have some housekeeping announcements we want to take care of before we get into our awards. Now, as a professional MC, I was used to doing housekeeping announcements at live events. They usually sounded something like this. Snacks are available on the terrace, and the closest restrooms are down the hall on the right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you all know where your kitchen is, and you certainly know where your closest bathroom is, so we're not going there. Virtual housekeeping announcements, they sound a little bit different these days. They sound like this. Number one, please rename yourself in Zoom to show your first and last name if you have not done so already. There are three little dots up in the top right corner of your Zoom uh, video window box. You click on those three dots, you drop down to rename, and you can type in your first and last name. There's a little tip for you moving forward as well, because we want to be able to put names with faces and show our appreciation and acknowledge our, our award winners. And we, again, we want to know exactly uh, who is behind the face. That's much easier when we have a first name and a last name, uh, much easier to decipher than when we see like iPhone or iPad or CXB4712. Very difficult. 
Okay, that's number one. Number two, you guys don't need any help with this, but get involved in the chat. Already the engagement this morning has been fantastic, or I should say this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are around the world, it's been fantastic. So please keep that going forward. Show your award winners uh, the love in the chat. You know, if you saw an award winner at the live event, even coming and going, walking in and out, you'd say, hey, congratulations, I'm really proud of you. That was awesome. And, you know, do the same thing here because it's a virtual event. Show them the love, and this way we, everyone can see that and acknowledge it and really kind of uh, embrace the community that we have here. So, again, get involved in the chat. Keep it going. Um, all awards show long. Number three, please know that we have everyone on mute to ensure no unnecessary background noise sneaks in, so don't worry about that. Uh, our fabulous team here, Amanda and Travis, they will be spotlighting and unmuting our individual speakers and award winners tonight as we go along. Number four, if you have not yet done so, please turn your cameras on. I see a whole bunch of people here, which is fantastic. 113 plus, uh, we want to make sure everyone has their cameras on because, again, we're trying to create uh, as much as we can the feeling of being in the same room together. So when we can see your face, it feels like we're all in the same virtual room together. Now, a few quick tips for video uh, meetings here. Uh, number five, watch your lighting, right? Some people sit in front of the window with the light coming in. Very difficult to see you. Uh, number four, make sure you clean your webcam. You might want to just... Uh, Wipe that off there. Otherwise, it looks like I haven't had enough coffee. Uh, number three, make sure you know where the camera is and that you're looking into it. We've all seen this person. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here at the Monday morning meeting. You, you know who you are. Uh, number two, pick a flattering angle. You know, you, this angle is not a good angle. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. I am honored to be accepting this award. I'm giving you a direct view up my nose. Not good. Uh, and last but certainly not least, my final tip, ladies and gentlemen, the most important, make sure you're wearing pants because you never know, you might get up to get some coffee, use the bathroom, and we could have an awkward situation. Yes, by the way, these are my real slippers. And I, this is not even, this isn't even special for AEE. This is just me on a Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. I got, I can do my little happy dance in my slippers, the running man. Oh yeah, that's right. All right, well, hey, I got to have some fun to get us going here. Uh, we are ready to do this. Before we get into our awards, I am going to turn it over to Bill Kent, Executive Director of the AEE, for some opening remarks. Bill, good morning to you, sir. Hey, Jeff. Great to see you. Thanks for getting up so early this morning in Las Vegas. So, and gotcha. Carl for getting up very early in California. So, so thanks. Uh, welcome to the International Awards Ceremony, the first virtual one we've had, by the way. Thanks, Jeff. So, uh, you know, I don't have my slippers. I'm not going to show my slippers, but very nice, Jeff. I tell you, I really like those. So, you know, <laughs> it's great to see everyone. I was going to say that, but once before we got started, just looking at the pictures and seeing everybody's faces from all around the world, you know, it's so good to see everyone, all of our close uh, friends, members of the AE family around the world. So, so great to see you. So first, I hope everyone is safe and healthy around the world. You know, to say this year has been exceptional would be a huge understatement. You know, the global pandemic, all sorts of natural disasters around the world. But in light of everything that's going on, the great energy work continues. And so I think evidenced by this year's recipients, you know, we dressed to the level of the awardees. So myself, Carl, um, uh, Jeff, um, who else? Um, um, Samer and Rusty. So, so tried to step it up. You know, it was great to see the award winners, not only the particip participants from around the world, but we've got award winners from the US, Canada, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, South Africa, Brazil, really uh, uh, representing AEE and the great work that all of you are doing around the world. So really like to say congratulations to the award winners for the great work you're doing. Congratulations to your teams and to your families for all the support that they do and provide. So um, finally, I'd like to say stay safe and I certainly hope that I can see each and every one of you in person again very <laughs> soon. So with that, we'll turn it back over to Jeff. All right, Bill, and no problem on the slippers, by the way. I have a, a whole bunch of pairs uh, so I can lend you. So. Got to up my game. That, that, you know, Bill, I have a collection. Don't, don't judge me, Bill. Don't judge me. Uh, well, thank you very much for those opening remarks. Bill, at this time, I'm going to pass the microphone over to Mr. Samer Zawade. Samer, over to you, sir. Looking thank good. you very much, uh, Jeff. Uh, good morning. 
Good morning. Good, morning. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. Uh, this is a really a unique moment in a history, uh, celebrating the first virtual ceremony for the A International Awards. Uh, we are very happy and honored uh, to carry on Al Tuman's legacy in celebrating the accomplishments of uh, outstanding international individuals, companies, and projects in the energy sector. Uh, I would like to start by acknowledging the outstanding performance of our executive director, uh, Bill Kent, and all the AE staff and board uh, throughout the past year. Really, um, uh, Bill and um, uh, all the AE staff, they were very flexible, agile, and uh, very focused to carry on the uh, difficult uh, task of everyday operation throughout the pandemic. So really, thank you. Uh, special thanks also to the AE volunteers. Uh, without them, we, we would not be at this point uh, celebrating these uh, outstanding individuals uh, and projects. Uh, we have volunteers in all uh, committees. And of course, uh, special thanks to our uh, coordinator, uh, outstanding coordinator, Jeff. Uh, I'm really excited to know more about the international awards winners uh, today and their, out, their, their outstanding service to their communities, saving operational expenses, saving resources, reducing CO2 emissions, uh, contributing to solving the climate crisis. Uh, wishing you a great event. Stay healthy and stay safe. Over to you, Jeff. All right, thank you so much, Samer. At this time, I'd like to introduce Rich Costello, the AEE Officer and Nominations Committee Chair, to recognize the 2020 and 2021 AEE Officers and Assistant Directors of International Member Development. Rich. Good evening, everybody. My name is Rich Costello, and I'm the Chair of the AEE Nomination and Election Committee. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge some extraordinary people for their time, commitment, and volunteer efforts, and without a doubt, continue to propel this organization forward with their exceptional leadership. I would first like to recognize the current 2020 AWE officers, starting off with President Samir Zawadan, Vice President-elect Buster Boxdale, Secretary Utah al -Levon, Region 1 Vice President Marianne Strabo, Region 2 Vice President Ray Sadar, Region 3 Vice President Rick Lipinski, Region 4 Vice President Steve Morgan, and Region 5 Vice President Cynthia Ma. Thank you all very much for your efforts this year. Next, I would like to take a moment and introduce the incoming 2021 slate of AWE officers. We welcome in President Buster Boxdale, President-elect Otu Alagon, and Secretary Eric Oliver. Region 1 new incoming VP, Adam Jennings. Region 2, Ray Sadaf. Region 3, Jerry Eaton. Region 4, Steve Morgan. And Region 5, Cynthia Mott. Thank you all for your commitment, and we look forward to working with you in 2021. Right now, I'd also uh, like to take this opportunity to recognize the AWE Director, as well as Assistance Directors of International Membership Development, who have and continue to dramatically expand the outreach and education opportunities for energy engineers around the globe. Starting off with Director Larry Good and Assistant Directors Leonard Chow, Asia Pacific Rim, Benoit Shadare, Asia Subcontinent, Kashik Bachachahare, Canada, Dr. Dusan Petrus, Eastern and Central Europe, Alexander Obendenko, former Soviet Union, Dr. Futa Alagon, Middle East, Dr. LJ Grover, Sub Saharan Africa, and Hikam Lahamadi, Western Europe. Again, thank you all for your service. Thank you, everybody, and look forward to seeing you all in person in future AW events. All right, thank you, Rich. At this time, I'd like to introduce Rusty Hodap, the AEE Foundation Scholarship Committee Chair, who is joining us live from Texas. Rusty, hello. Thank you, Jeff. Good morning. Greetings, everyone. 
As most of you know, the foundation of AEE supports the association's mission by raising funds to provide scholarship for tomorrow's energy professionals. With just about everything being turned upside down this year, I'm very pleased to report that the work of the foundation hardly skipped a beat. With the commitment and support of the association board of directors, our members, chapters, donors, and the Council on Women in Energy and Environmental Leadership, we were able to continue our work in 2020, and I'm happy to report that every energy scholar who applied for a foundation scholarship, 39 in all, including eight international applicants, received one. Since its inception, the foundation has raised and awarded over $1.1 million in scholarships. And during a year when virtually everything is uncertain, we're grateful that we were able to provide some financial stability to our energy's future generations, our industry's future generation. So as this unprecedented year draws to a close and we look forward to better times in 2021, we know the challenges will remain. And if 2020 has taught us anything, it's to take nothing for granted. So we encourage you to keep supporting the work of the foundation. We thank you so much for your generous donations and support. And we look forward to all that we'll achieve together in the years ahead. Congratulations to all of our award winners and back to you, Jeff. All right, thank you so much, Rusty. Now, this is the moment we've all been waiting for, folks. We're gonna get into our awards and to do the official honors, I'm going to turn things over to Mr. Carl Salas, the AE Awards Committee Chair, who is joining us live from California. Carl, take it away. Hey, everyone, how are you doing? It's, uh, it's quite a privilege to uh, be here in my 19th year as chair of this committee. Uh, mm -hmm. A little bit more about it late, later, but let me just tell you now, I'm a little washed out because I practiced yesterday. I have the beautiful California sun shining, shining in through my window, but it, the sun hasn't come up yet. So I had to turn this light on here and uh, struggling with a little washout. So I, I hope you appreciate it. Also, I'll tell you, this is the first time in, um, in my life that I've ever been in a tuxedo at six in the morning. So uh, it's, well, maybe after, maybe after my senior prom, but that's another story. Anyway, uh, you know, this is a tough time as Rush, Rusty mentioned, and thanks Rusty for your comments. But also, you know, one, one of the things I'm feeling right now is the same love and family I always feel with AE. It's fascinating to me, to be honest with you. Uh, thanks to all of you for being here. Um, I'm, I'm reading the chats as they're flashing up on my screen. It's really, truly a pleasure to be part of this incredible AEE family. So let me kind of get started, but you know, I am in California and I've started these uh, uh, award ceremonies with just a little bit of levity, but also a little bit of seriousness about what I call the California report. So I'm going to give you a quick report on what's going on here in California. You know, um, I'm in the Silicon Valley, uh, but it's still kind of like the, the land of fruits and nuts and wonderful things going on here. So let me show you a couple of things. First of all, last year, I got a lot of feedback from my first slide. I'm going to show you a similar slide this year. Uh, I've updated it. This is, uh, I live in the Silicon Valley and, you know, Google and Adobe and Apple and Facebook are kind of spitting distance from where, you know, my office is. And uh, you can see this house for sale. This, I actually, people didn't believe me last year when I showed the, the shot. This is a new one. This is, is uh, was listed about two months ago and uh, it's at $479,000. You can't see the train tracks in the back, but there is actually train tracks in the back of this gem. And uh, I just want you to know that I brought the Zillow part of it so you could understand. And if you had time and could read what they say about this charming San Jose cottage, you would be just thrilled to spend your $479,000 on this. So let me go on to some more serious things going on in California, which is actually good. And, and again, some good has come out of this COVID thing. Um, you know, we had the clearest air and the least traffic we've had probably in 20 years here. And it's quite something to see what's going on. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you, a, there's even a more dramatic picture the next slide, which is the LA freeways nowadays. Um, I do some work in the in Southern California and it's just staggering to be able to drive around at almost any time of day. So that's that's really been some, some of the good that's coming out of this. I think we're learning a lot about um, uh, climate change and, and how, what a big impact we can have. As, as much as I would like to be with you all tonight, it is really interesting to see what we've done with this whole Zoom platform as the year has developed. Um, next one is, I kind of wanted to show you also some other things going on in California. You might have read about the fires. We have had horrible forest fires here, and uh, it's been really tough. And a lot of us have got to know the, uh, this is a purple air 
uh, website and we are able to track the air quality on a minute to minute basis with sensors everywhere that also maps in the EPA sensors for a particulate matter. And it's been a, a fascinating, something I never even knew about before. We have actually had the worst air quality in the world in spot days and weeks as in the last couple of months. So it's been kind of a double and triple whammy with the COVID thing and, and our forest fires. And speaking of our forest fires, uh, be, a lot of the forest fires were caused by some of the old infrastructure and the utilities. And we've actually had scheduled blackouts or non-scheduled blackouts because every time there's a fire warning, the PG&E or some of the other utilities will shut down the utility, will sit on the grid in the uh, high risk section. You can see, this is a standard pickup line now here in California. <laughs> and it's true, it's really true. Like my uh, Zillow ad is true. It's really true. <clears throat> All kinds of things going on here. I'm still hoping for the sun to come up, but it hasn't yet. So let's get in the award ceremony anyway. So I want to first tell you about the process. This is about a year labor of love here with the process of this. The uh, announcement for applications for these awards come out in uh, January, in February. Yeah. In February, we get them, uh, the staff puts them all together. Michelle Whitlock, who you can see in the screen here, puts all these together and we get scores and scores, hundreds of applications from all over the world as you, as you know and as you can imagine. And uh, then she collects <coughs> and distributes it to myself and each of our six regional vice presidents. And we take about a month to go through them and try to come up with our individual best choices, one, two, three, sometimes four of our best choices of each of the categories. After that, so that's in about February and March, we're working on that. In April, we all get together. This year it was by Zoom. Uh, and it was kind of interesting and, and just as much fun in a different way because it's quite a, um, it's quite a, a bout <clears throat> to go from our four individual best choices, and there's seven of us, down to one who we feel is probably most representative of what we're trying to accomplish with these global awards, which is basically to shine a light on all that all of us do with an uh, example of just 11 people who you will meet here tonight. So again, even after we've chosen that one, it's preliminary because then staff vets all of these final applications. And in the past, we've after some vetting, we've actually gone back to another choice, but it's quite a process. So it, was, um, is it, it isn't until about June or July that we actually officially issue our final list. And then it's taken this long to put this together to reach out to the individual award winners and to be here tonight. Oh, excuse me, this morning. <laughs> I still can't believe I'm at Tux at six in the morning and the sun hasn't come up. Anyway, uh, so uh, I think that's what I wanted to say before we move into the actual awards. And that's why we're here. Um, I, I did want to mention to you that staff has sent out a list of all of the information or at least a summary of the information of each of the award winners. And this isn't about me, this is about the award winners. So I'm not gonna spend that much time uh, describing what they've done. Rather, I'm gonna introduce them with a couple of highlights of what the committee saw when we said, this is the one amongst all the ones, many who should be here with us because all of them have been so good. I mean, some of these applications are, well, I mean, it's just, it just humbles, I think, all of us. Anyway, let's start with the first award, which is really the foundation of AEE. It is the Energy Engineer of the Year. This is really the foundation. That's who, you know, we started, what, 40 plus years ago. That's really what makes up the core and the foundation of everything we are. And this year's award winner is, um, has a 17 year career in energy management. And she has assisted her clients in, in over a hundred million dollars in implemented energy savings and she's done that over uh, with over 80 energy projects in 15 countries. She served on the board of directors of the Ontario Society of Professional Engineers uh, for three years through 2019 and she still uh, volunteers as the chair of the Energy Task Force. It is just a pleasure to give this year's Energy Engineer of the Year Award to da 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 Emily Thorne Courtney, our Energy Engineer of the Year Award. Let's see what Emily has to say here. Thank you so much to the Association of Energy Engineers and its awards committee 
I am humbled and honoured to be selected for this award and proudly represent the Canadian energy management community. Founding Thorn Associates and being a female engineering entrepreneur has not always been easy, but it is thanks to so many people that have enabled this award. I believe ethics is the most important part of business. Do the right thing when no one is looking. Look at all of your actions and ensure that you are comfortable with any of them ending up on the front page of the newspaper. To my husband, Emmanuel, thank you for supporting me in all of life's adventures over the past almost 20 years that we have known each other. The most important career decision you can make is who you marry. To my son, Kevin, and twin daughters, Amy and Clara, thank you for keeping life fun when work was stressful and for helping me live in the present. To my parents, thank you for raising me in a loving environment, nurturing my interest in math and science and instilling self-confidence in me that I can achieve my dreams. To my brother and sister and their spouses, thank you for always supporting me. Thank you to John Feldman from the Independent Electricity System Operator in Ontario for nominating me and for being my first mentor in energy management. To my clients, I would not be here without you. Special thanks to those who believed in me during tough times. You know who you are. I asked my eight-year-old son if he knew what a client was and he said in French, yes, it is someone who thinks you are super. In reality, I think all of my clients are super and I'm honored to work with you. A shout out to my colleagues at some fantastic organizations, Step Up, Artemis and the Ontario Society of Professional Engineers. COVID-19 has created adversity for most of us in different ways, but adversity also enables to get to better know yourself and it has created new opportunities. As energy management professionals, you are leaders in your organization and community in the transition to a low carbon economy. I urge you to dream bigger, engage more broadly and act decisively and swiftly. Together, we are making the world a better place. Thank you. Wow. Okay, the award ceremony is over right now. That was fantastic. Thank you, Emily. And that's why we're here, gang. That's why we're here. Wonderful. Emily also mentioned, you know, the, the who you marry is probably your most important career choice. I'll tell you, you know, my wonderful wife, Marianne of 36 years has been so important in my, um, in my development, my professional development here with, in the energy business. But I will tell you, she should have also added, maybe it's who you don't marry, uh, who's important in your career. I, I was dating this this attorney before and well, let's get into our next award. Our next award is uh, corporate energy management. This goes to a corporation who has developed and deployed a comprehensive energy program that really is what I would call world-class. Um, this year's uh, award recipient uh, represents one of the largest privately owned real estate portfolios in New York City. And it, they have long considered energy management part of what it takes to really truly manage all building operations. And it's true. And that's, I think, what all of us are finding as we go along. We're rising to higher levels because exactly what this award winner and all of us have discovered. These folks have achieved a 48% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions already. And it's already halfway to the 2050 target established by the New York City Carbon Challenge. It's my pleasure to give this year's Corporate Energy Management Award to Rudin Management Company. And John Gilbert is going to be talking about the acceptance of this award. Switch it over to John. On behalf of the Rudin family and the entire uh, Rudin management team, both our operations team as well as our, our leasing and management team, I want to humbly and with an enormous amount of honor accept this award on behalf of, of, our, of our group. Uh, from the, the International Association of Energy Engineers. As we look at the environment in which we all operate our buildings today, we realize there's nothing more important, nothing more essential than creating safe and sustainable space. What we've been able to do at Rudin 
utilizing Nantum, our operating system Nantum, is to create that situational awareness and utilize machine learning and artificial intelligence to enable our customers to know that they are working and living in spaces that are as sustainable and as efficient as they possibly can be. So on behalf of, of the Rudin family uh, and acknowledging the great work that done by our Senior Vice President for Operations, Gene Bonnieberger and his team, as well as the great work done by Sono Panda and the Prescriptive Data team that ultimately is operating Nantum for us. Uh, we accept this award. Uh, we are humbled by it uh, and we are honored by it. So to all of you who had to, something to do with that, thank you very much. Be well. Thanks so much. Here we go, gang. This is this is really something for me. I don't often get to really, um, even though I'm physically close to the award winners, I'm not, back in my mind, I'm fumbling around with the next award, but this is really quite something. And uh, so let's move on to our uh, Institutional Energy Management Award. It's like the Corporate Energy Management Award, except, you know, it's for universities, municipalities, colleges, and uh, who have the same challenges that the corporate folks do, but it's kind of a different organizational hierarchy. So uh, we separated this out some years ago. And um, this year's award winner is a STARS Gold Campus spanning over 15 million square feet of space. They reduced their greenhouse gases by 81% despite a 24% increase in square footage at the campus. Um, they've also held their maintenance steady for the last five years in spite of this increase. Um, and it's just a, a pleasure to give this year's Institutional Energy Management Award to the University of Cincinnati. And Michael Hoffman is gonna tell us about it, a little bit about it now. Hello, I am Mike Hoffman, the Director of Utilities at the University of Cincinnati. I am fortunate to represent the university and be here virtually with everyone tonight to accept the AEE International Award for Institutional Energy Management. The significance of this award is immeasurable to the university and our constituents, whether it be students, faculty, or staff, because it is truly only through the efforts of a great number of individuals and teams across the university working together that we are able to achieve this level of recognition. The University of Cincinnati is the second oldest and second largest municipal university in the country, a STARS Gold campus, classified as a Research One University by the Carnegie Commission, and widely recognized as a top tier academic institution. This award recognizes the importance that the University of Cincinnati places on being able to provide energy efficiency, environmental stewardship, reliable electric chilled water, and steam throughout campus, while working tirelessly to improve the efficiency of operations and sustainable utilization of energy in all campus buildings. I accept this award on behalf of the larger University of Cincinnati community, as it is only because of this community that this success was attained. It is a result of the actions of everyone who calls the university campus home on a daily basis that we are able to accomplish the outcomes described in this submittal. The utility plan in place at UC emphasizes above all continuous improvement. AEE's presence is felt across the UC campus. UC personnel responsible for energy management have achieved numerous AEE certifications, including energy efficiency practitioner, certified energy manager, and several elected executive positions in the AEE Southwest Ohio chapter. I will take this moment to again thank AEE for honoring our university with this award and to acknowledge the people of UC for everything that has been done to date and more importantly, for everything that is still yet to come. Wow, I keep saying, wow. Bill, we haven't done this before in the in the physical award ceremony. That's something, huh? Wow. Right. Thank, thank you for the University of Cincinnati to make that the effort like this to, to help make this 
show, this broadcast, these global awards feel like they always do, which is just, you know, heartfelt and amazing. Hey, let's go to the next award. Energy professional development. That's what AEE is all about. I mean, we started and have always been about training. We're bringing together professionals and even non-professionals and introducing them and educating about the uh, rewards and the real realities of energy and greenhouse gas savings. You know, it's so funny. Um, I, I tell people, you know, I, when I tell people I save kilowatt hours, they kind of get, get glaze over sometimes. But when I say, oh, we're saving tons of greenhouse gases, they go, oh my gosh, you do that too? Well, scope one and scope two of, of, um, of the all the calculations that we all do is electric gas. That's all it is. And so, yeah, we are at the forefront. I want to remind all of us that we are at the forefront of this whole carbon world or non-carbon world we're moving into right now. And again, I think it's really well demonstrated by this year's Energy Professional Development Award winner. This guy is, is really amazing. He's the Dean of the Faculty and the Atkins Chair of the Master's and PhD Sustainability Programs at the British University of Dubai. He holds a PhD in Mechanical Engineering from Ohio State University. He has 30 years post PhD experience in energy related teaching, research and training in every single thing, every single aspect of what we do from renewables down to variable speed drives. This is, he's an amazing, amazing human being, an amazing representative of what we are and what we do. This year's Energy Professional Development War goes to Assam Abu Jelly. And let's see what Bassam has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, greetings and warm welcome to all of you from beautiful Dubai. My name is Bassam Abu Hajle, and I am honored and humbled to be the recipient of the AEE's 2020 International Energy Professional Development Award. I would like to thank the AEE Selection Committee for the honor they have bestowed upon me. I'm a professor of energy conservation, management, and renewable energy at the British University in Dubai. Although an academic for 30 years, I have always tried to link my teaching and research to the practical needs of the energy industry. Joining the AAE significantly helped me in accomplishing this. It placed me in a better position to be able to effortlessly exchange a wide range of knowledge and experiences related to the energy industry between the students attending my classes, as well as the professionals attending a range of AAE professional workshops that I deliver. The success of our professional energy training programs in the UAE would not have been possible without the efforts and support of many, including the progressive energy policies of the Dubai Supreme Council of Energy, the foresight of Etihad ESCO in recognizing the importance of professional certification, the constant collaboration of the AEE, and the unwavering support from the management of the British University in Dubai. Last but not least, I would like to thank my wonderful and ever-supporting family who have stood by me throughout all of this work. Thank you all for taking the time to share this prestigious recognition with me. Thank you, Professor. Hey, it was a little hard for me to hear him, and it reminds me to remind all of you, you can go to a link that has the, the many more details about all of our award winners. And this, uh, I, if I had more time, I could read everything here, but uh, this guy truly is uh, one in a million, and we thank you and congratulations to you, Bassam. Let's go to the next award, which is Energy Manager of the Year. This uh, award kind of was a natural evolution of our Energy Engineer of the Year, and it was a bit developed because of the continued awareness that, you know, as we were sitting there doing our little engineering things, all of a sudden we keep rising and rising and rising to higher levels. And now, you know, I don't think there's any corporation, any university, any municipality that doesn't have someone at pretty high levels talking energy management and greenhouse gas. Um, this year's recipient has spent 46 years in the steel industry. You know, that's kind of one of the old tried and true locked in place industries. And he has had a series of managerial positions at Bethlehem Steel, International Steel, Mattel Steel, and Ar Arclo Mattel Steel. And uh, he has just done amazing things as the manager of continuous improvement and coordinator of the uh, USA Energy Reduction Program for Acelator Mattel. He's achieved 35 million in incentives. He's got 400 million in capital projects going on, and he's saved over $270 million in energy savings. This year's Energy Manager of the Year Award goes to Lawrence Fabina. So bring him up here, Lawrence. What do you got to say? Good day, everybody. My name is Larry Fabina, Manager of Continuous Improvement and Energy Management for ArcelorMittal USA. I'd like to thank everyone for being here uh, today uh, for this event. 
Uh, but I'd like to really start off with thanking AEE for naming me the Energy Manager of the Year for 2020, as well as Tom Winning from Oak Ridge National Labs for nominating me for this award. Again, thanks to both of you. A little bit about my, my, my background. I've been in steel for 47 years. Uh, most of those uh, years of managing operations from the melting of steel to the rolling of plate. Uh, jobs that I, I truly enjoy, but the one I truly love uh, is reducing our energy within our sort of middle USA for the last 14 years. I started out uh, with uh, reducing our energy uh, program uh, in 2006 with, uh, with the help of the Energy Star program, a great government program that truly works. Uh, the Energy Star program uh, ran by, run by Betsy Dutrow, fantastic program. A lot of tools and a lot of help uh, on getting a program up to start. Also, I'd like to thank uh, the Department of Energy's uh, Better Plants program, uh, led today by Eli, Eli Levine, a uh, fantastic person with a great program. And we have uh, used their implant training, uh, their online tools, 50,001 ready, uh, great. The combination of uh, both of those government programs uh, truly can, can get anybody off to a good start. So again, thank you to the United States government for supporting two fantastic programs, Energy Star and the Better Plants uh, program to the US Department of Energy. I also would like to thank uh, our USA leadership. You know, they supported me over the last 14 years and let me do what I've done, uh, but also supporting with me uh, hundreds of millions of dollars of capital projects that actually slow down the meter at the gate. But really, I'd like to thank the plants. Uh, the plant leadership in the workforce is where uh, the energy reductions take place. With, uh, without their fingers on the knobs and turning them in the right directions and the supporting of projects and the uh, conservation of energy, uh, we wouldn't be where we're at. I'd like to thank special people like uh, Rashad Bahel and know our energy champions at the plant for keeping energy uh, at the forefront. Uh, but it takes uh, more help than just uh, the, those people within our sort of middle USA. Now uh, it takes the research group, it takes our engineering group, our purchasing group, but a special group I want to uh, name is, uh, is our communications group. They've done a fantastic job again from day one of spreading the word of what we're all about and what we have done. So thank you there as well. I'd like to thank our suppliers. Um, our supplier group, uh, again, uh, continue to bring energy reduction uh, products uh, to the forefront and, and explain to me how they can actually help us out in reducing our energy. I'd like to thank a special friend of mine, uh, Fred Shornborn, who passed away a few years ago. Now, Fred uh, was more than just a friend. No, he was a mentor, a coach, a cheerleader. And uh, thanks, Fred, uh, for all the help. And I'd like to give a special thanks to my wife, Patricia. Uh, Pat's been with me for over 47 years, uh, put up with me uh, day in and day out, has encouraged me to do what I love and, uh, and continue to, to work at it. So thank you, Patricia, for, for all the great times. And uh, again, I'd like to thank AE again uh, for, uh, for naming me the Energy Manager of the Year. And uh, thank you for participating today. And I hope to see you in an upcoming AE event. Again, thanks uh, and uh, have a great day. Be safe out there, guys. Larry, thanks so much for especially talking about the working level folks who are really making a difference. You know, the people I work with, they're always excited we do solar or, um, you know, fuel cells and all those sexy technologies. But really what you brought up and where all the savings are being made or not all of them, but significant savings are being made or by the working level people and also the communications that's going on. It's been so long that we haven't really been able to articulate all the great things we're doing. And thank you so much for mentioning both of those. And congratulations, Larry. Hey, listen, I see the beautiful California sun coming up over the horizon. Let me turn off my light here and see if we can broadcast with, oh, nah, I guess that's not gonna work. What do you think? Let's see, we'll give it a next one maybe. <laughs> so let's go to our next award winner. This is the Energy Innovator of the Year. This is award is presented to an individual for outstanding achievement and innovation in promoting the adoption of renewable energy on our green technologies. And this guy, has been doing some great things in the oil and gas industry. Again, a kind of a, uh, an established tried and true, we're not gonna change industry. He has kept ahead of everything, bringing together solar PV and solar thermal to the oil and gas industry. 
This guy has done a myriad of projects and he's always keeping ahead of the planners in that industry who again may have often been inclined to just go with the tried and true technologies. He's done more than I, anyone I've ever met relative to really bringing a new technology into an established industry. This year's Energy Innovator of the Year Award goes to Saqib Sahad. Saqib, what do you have to say? Thank you very much. In fact, it is very hard to put my feelings into words. Nevertheless, I am very glad to speak at this very vital and momentous occasion in my life. It is really a great honor for me to receive this prestigious Energy Innovator of the Year International Award. I dedicate this award to my parents. If it wasn't for my parents, I definitely wouldn't be the person I am today. Needless to say, I dedicate this award to my loving wife, my son and my daughter. Most noteworthy, I dedicate this award to my teachers and professors. I am thankful to the management of my company at No Gas Processing. I am also thankful to the management of Abu Dhabi National Oil Company, our parent company for their persistent support. I would also like to thank the Association of Energy Engineers for this award. Coming to innovation, innovation is where imagination meets ambitions. I am from the oil and gas industry where the product itself is energy. So the energy required for processing is predominantly available internally. In this scenario, large scale renewables application is not envisaged. I am gratified for actively advocating integration of large scale renewables in the oil and gas industry. My work demonstrated viability of utility scale solar CSP integration with the thermal energy network of the processing facilities. I also underlined the vital role of renewables in ultra sour gas processing, which is very energy intensive process. My final thoughts are about the journey ahead. With a great price comes great responsibility. In my view, this recognition confers the responsibility to continue this journey for a more sustainable future with more vigor and resolve. Taking this opportunity, I also pledge and assure my personal commitment to contribute towards the awareness and learning of our young generation for a more energy efficient, clean and sustainable future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Saki. So uh, we're moving into the projects section of our awards before we finish up with some more people. And I, I kind of wanted to uh, take you through a little bit of a voyage with this, talking about some of the past winners of our energy projects of the year. And what, I, what I'd like to remind people is that when you think of a global energy project of the year, you might visualize, and I know a lot of the people I work with who aren't as closely associated with energy and carbon as I am, um, you kind of think of these kind of more sexy projects. This we gave out uh, probably about eight or 10 years ago. This is the Montreal Space Biodome, you know, energy project of the year. Wow, this is fantastic. And just think about how, you know, sexy and world-class and global it is. Um, let's go to the other one. I know back in about 2005 or 2006, you know, Johnson & Johnson put in one of, the, one of the earlier, you know, commercially or industrial companies putting in a large solar system uh, in New York, no less, not in, you know, one of the sunnier, necessarily sunnier states. Um, and so again, this is kind of the things I think a lot of people think about when you say, well, I was at the global award ceremony. But I want to show you another award that went out, I think, probably seven or eight years ago. This is the city, city of Irvine HVAC replacement. Boring, right? Boring. Oh, yeah. You, you just do HVAC, huh? Or you just work on the floor in a steel mill, huh? Pretty boring. But, but some of the greatest change and challenges and, and, um, and, and improvements come in greenhouse gas and in energy in this. I'll just show you where they did with this HVAC replacement. You know, they put in solar above, they put in water cooled chillers, they put in skylights. I mean, all of these things are what we represent. And it's not the sexy stuff we do, it's, the, it's the, the working level things that we do that is really changing this world. And so as we go into these energy projects of the year, you will see that in this particular year, the committee looked at some kind of established technologies in some cases and said, you know what, these are really representative of who we are and what we do. 
So let's go on to the uh, Energy Project of the Year National. Um, it's not very sexy. It's a LED lighting project. But after quite a bit of deliberation and going through all the applicants, the committee felt it represented a comprehensive approach and a real uh, representation of a, of a kind of a standard retrofit technology. These guys saved had a 79% reduction in electric use, a 45% increase in lighting levels. And so that's the other thing that we do. As we sometimes save, we actually improve. And in this case, they've improved their lighting levels by almost 50% a 200% reduction in maintenance and over 28,000 metric tons in greenhouse gas savings. I'm really proud to give this year's Energy Project of the Year National to the Heart Center Retrofit Project. Accepting is Pat Patrick Curvis. Curtis. Patrick, what do you have to say? Hello, my name is Patrick Curtis. I'm the Energy Manager for Huntsville Hospital Health System in Huntsville, Alabama. We would like to thank the Association of Energy Engineers for this award. It is a great honor to be recognized for improving energy efficiency at our heart center. I would also like to thank Cecil W. Jones of our Huntsville AEE chapter who nominated us for this award. The majority of the fixtures were two by four with four 32 watt 4100 K bulbs. We removed all ballast and replaced each fixture with two 15 watt 4000 K LED bulbs. Our lighting power reduction was around 79% and the lighting foot candles increase of 45%. On behalf of the Huntsville Hospital Health System, thank you again for recognizing us for our efforts. Thank you. And again, we were the committee really, really deliberated a long time. I remember, and I, I know Rick Levinsky, you're here, I know for sure. I remember we went back and forth on this, but really, um, it. It is kind of the, our roots, uh, the soul of what we're doing. And thank you very much, uh, Heart Center, for what you've done and for allowing us to bring you to the, to shine a light on you too. So Energy Project of the Year International. <clears throat> this project, man, oh man, it introduced concept of energy management systems and energy systems optimization in the South African industrial sector at large. End product was thousands of engineers trained, hundreds of national experts qualified, and over 5.7 million terawatts of electricity saved over numerous, numerous sites. I'm really, I feel privileged and proud to give this year's Energy Project of the Year International to the GEF South Africa National Industrial Energy Efficiency Project. Accepting is Alfred Hartzenberg. Alfred, what do you got to say? Tell us about it. I want to thank AE for this award and, and commend them for the recognition of energy efficiency excellence globally. Who would have thought 10 years ago when we embarked on this journey that one day we'd be receiving this prestigious award. And there are quite a few people that we need to recognize and thanks for that. Firstly, I want to express my deep appreciation to Susan Rist for nominating this project for this award. I also want to recognize the two gentlemen that were pivotal in the design, the launch, and the implementation of the project in its early years, James New from UNIDO and Gershon McHugh from the NCPC. I think the stakeholders need mentioning too, and the stakeholders created the conditions that were conducive for the project to flourish. And here I want to thank Mr. Gerard Fouri and Ms. Ilse Baron from the DTIC. I want to thank Mr. Barry Breedenkamp from Senedi. Ms. Rana Gonaim and Mr. Marco Matteini from the UNIDO office in Vienna. And last but not least, Mr. Ndebuyo Rapulo from the National Cleaner Production Center, South Africa. We also need to bear in mind and thank the international trainers from Europe and America who came to South Africa to develop the capacities and set the platform for us to achieve what we did. There's no doubt that the IEE project team in South Africa deserves special mention. 
And here I want to recognize and thank Mr. Bainan van der Merwe and his skills development team, and Tanya van Zeil, Sybil Rold, and Christine Fuljun. I also want to thank Ms. Julie Wells and her marketing and cons team in Fatima Baltman and Constance Mokalante. The technical project team did sterling work, and here we recognize Faith Makwaja, Akona Mbebe, Wanathari Maja, and Sasha Ramdari, Pumla Makai, Militia Pillay, Nandani Nsiwani, Bianca Latchman, and Njabulo Nglovo, Nandalani Mkize, and Adrian Rudolph. Thank you guys for making this happen. And in closing, I want to humbly accept again and humbly thank AE for this, but recognize that CADA of Energy Management System and Energy Systems Optimization Experts in South Africa, and those business leaders who believed our message and decided to act. I thank you all. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Some people have their kittens walk across the screen. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, energy, um, this is the next, Pro the next award goes to the, sorry, I'm a little bit, uh, the, the next project goes to uh, the Innovative Energy Project of the Year. This project is really a, a program managed and implemented by a Brazilian firm. And uh, it, it, it's again, one of those things, the technology is like, oh boy, you just do motors, ah, motors. Aren't you doing solar? No. We, we do everything. And this is an amazing project. Uh, it focuses conventional technology in an unconventional industry, the mining industry, which consumes over 40% of the national electricity use in Brazil. The simple program of uh, just replacing old motors with new motors, but having a, a, a graded financial bonus system depending on the old motor power and the new motor performance efficiency. The, the simple program had incredible results with over 18.6 gigawatt hours of savings spread across 152 operation locations all over the country. It's a fabulous project with a standard technology and we're really proud to give this year's en Innovative Energy Project of the Year Award to the bonus motor program promoting energy efficiency. Accepting is Arthur Rangel. Arthur, bring it on. Olá, meu nome é Arthur Rangel Laureano, sou engenheiro de produção eletricista da Celesc, empresa de distribuição de energia elétrica do estado de Santa Catarina, Brasil. É um prazer estar aqui hoje para receber o AEE International Award pelo programa Bônus Motor, desenvolvido pela nossa empresa no âmbito do Programa de Eficiência Energética da ANEL. A ANEL é a Agência Regulatória Nacional de Energia Elétrica do Brasil. Esse projeto foi desenvolvido para atuar de forma mais simples e direta na eficiência energética dos sistemas de força motriz, promovendo a atualização do parque industrial catarinense, tornando a prática de recondicionamento de motores elétricos menos atrativas e possibilitando ao setor empresarial um menor consumo de energia elétrica, mantendo ou até mesmo aumentando suas atividades. O programa Bônus Motor promoveu a substituição de mais de 1.700 motores, representando uma economia total de 18,64 GWh ano, e uma redução na demanda no horário de ponta de 2,4 megawatts. Essa economia corresponde ao consumo de aproximadamente 7.500 residências no mesmo período. Um total de 3,8 milhões de dólares foram vendidos em motores elétricos, dos quais 1,3 milhões foram pagos por esse programa. Os clientes participantes obtiveram um bônus médio de 33,78% na troca de seus motores. O Innovative Energy Project Award é o reconhecimento do sucesso na execução desse projeto e dos seus resultados obtidos. O custo da energia economizada no bônus motor foi menor que o custo para a geração de energia elétrica por todas as outras tecnologias no Brasil, provando que a eficiência energética é uma alternativa altamente viável. A mesma quantidade de energia pode ser disponibilizada a preços mais baixos, sem a necessidade de novas obras, e com reflexos positivos para o meio ambiente. Novamente, em nome da Celeste, que agradecemos por essa premiação e pelo reconhecimento do nosso trabalho desenvolvido na área de eficiência energética. Muito obrigado. Olá, meu nome é Sandro Lewandowski, diretor de distribuição da Celesc, empresa concessionária de energia elétrica do estado de Santa Catarina, situada no sul do Brasil. 
É, hoje atendemos a mais de 3 milhões de unidades consumidoras. Ah, nesses últimos anos, a empresa vem investindo fortemente em um programa de eficiência energética, tanto que em 2019 o montante chegou a mais de 11 milhões de dólares. É, nesse contexto, estamos muito felizes com o prêmio recebido pelo bônus motor e é um reconhecimento ao trabalho desenvolvido e uma motivação a novos desafios. Wow, what a great, 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 interesting how this program is coming together. I'm just completely fascinated. And by the way, you can almost see more sun. You should see it. I'll show you the view out the window later. It's We're almost getting there, but I'm going to keep the light on, I think. Let me look. Oh, I can't find the switch. There it is. Ah, maybe I'll go with this. Oh, no, I can't read my paper. <laughs> okay. So, you know, some years ago, we noticed something about um, all the, the, most of the award winners or many of the award winners, there's too much white hair. And we realized how proud we would be and that how many young professionals there are coming up in the industry. And I just wanted to, uh, we came up with these awards, which are really the emerging or what we call the Young Energy Professional of the Year Awards. And these are some of the kids coming through. And I, I know you kids don't feel like kids, but believe me, you're kids. <laughs> Anyway, some of you, some of the people coming through are just amazing, doing amazing things just a few years out of school and just a few years into the profession of energy as some meld into. We have two that we're going to uh, highlight today, although, again, as a committee, it was so tough. We had to score two of applicants and you, we hated not bringing them all up, but we, we had to narrow it down to one or two. In this case, our first young energy professional year has been a part of the team at General Motors for three years only. Um, but she's uh, leading an execution of over 16 million of energy contracts and 24 million are pending. She uh, just graduated from uh, Washington University in St. Louis with a BS in chemical engineering and a master's in environmental energy and chemical engineering. I'm so proud and, you know, tickled and pleased to give our first Young Energy Professional of the Year Award to Aaron Lawrence. Let's bring Aaron up. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, I'd like to start by saying thanks to the Association of Energy Engineers for honoring me with this award. I was so excited and surprised to receive it, honestly. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, my GM team, Al and Rob, of course, for their leadership, and then all of my colleagues who I've worked with on numerous energy projects, and you've always been available to help me um, and collaborate with me to make, um, to save energy around the company. Uh, special thanks, of course, to Paul Hartmeister, who nominated me for this award and who's always been available if I have any random questions about how to submit a shopping cart or how I should do a particular project. Um, he's always been, been available to help. Um, I really got into energy efficiency as a way uh, to think about reducing carbon and save money around the company. Um, it's been a passion of mine ever since college and of course was a career path for me once I joined General Motors and I've been doing it for the past almost four years now. So I'm really excited to continue in this space. Um, of course, I hope to uh, spread the word about energy conservation and of course the AEE um, and all the great work that you do. And I hope to continue to work on impactful projects for General Motors as well. Um, so thanks again so much for this award and congratulations to the rest of the award winners. I hope to meet you all in person at some point, um, but I'm grateful that uh, we were able to do this over Zoom at least. <laughs> Thank you, Aaron. Thank you very much. Hey, we have one other of met too many that we'd like to show energy, young energy professionals a year. This guy is recognized as a leader uh, in energy engineering um, for the ETC Group, which is a 30-year-old energy efficiency and engineering firm. He was recently recognized by his co-workers as, well, just like full of energy. The guy is apparently a great guy. We're going to finally get to meet him. Well, while young, his colleagues all look up to him as a true leader. And let me give you our second, present our second Young Energy Professional of the Year award to Brian Lang. Brian, nice to meet you. Hello, I'm Brian Lang, and I'm one of this year's Young Energy Professionals of the Year. Thank you so much, AE, for this award and for the consideration. I think 
what AE does and what all of us in this conference do is just amazing. We have so many smart, talented, and driven people doing so many cool things in the industry, helping building owners save money, reduce their power consumption, and in turn, reduce carbon emissions and water emissions into the atmosphere. It's really just the most exciting stuff. And we get to work with a lot of complex systems and a lot of wonderful people that are very smart and experienced in their fields. Uh, it's really just an exciting time to be doing what we're all doing. Uh, lots of people to thank as there always are and as everyone always does, but thank you to everyone at ETC Group for letting me stand on the shoulders of all the hard work that you've done over the years and for training me to be the engineer that I am today, to have learned from your guys' experiences and my own to, you know, really advance what we do and try and make things as best as we can. Also, thank you to my friends over at Banner Health for letting me learn uh, how best to operate systems in your buildings and save some energy along the way and all the fun and difficult times we had learning those lessons about how to, how to operate certain HVAC systems. Also, thank you to my family for always believing in me and for being with me through school and through starting work and learning this incredibly precise and uh, really comprehensive field. Mostly thank you to my wife, Kaylee, for always encouraging me and for taking care of our family when I'm at work and allowing me to pursue this career uh, as far as I have thus far and into the future. Uh, thank you all again for this award and for all the wonderful things that you do. Terrific, thank you. Uh, last but not least, you know, every year we give out a Distinguished Service Award to the past president, the president from this past year. And I will tell you, I was, uh, I'm a past president, but I can't even remember how long ago it was, probably in the 90s sometimes. But, um, you know, I've seen all the presidents over the years, and I have to tell you that uh, this year's Distinguished Service Award goes to a, a, a human being, a wonderful woman, whose experience and dedication is only exceeded by her sense of humor and the raw joy she puts into all the work she does. This is a wonderful woman, a wonderful past president, and uh, what she did for this organization this year, especially in a transition year like this, her humor and her joy and her passion has just been great, and I'm just really proud to personally be able to give the Distinguished Service of Year uh, Award to Lori Moen. Lori, you were wonderful to end this. Thank you, AE, for this wonderful recognition. It's too bad that we can't all be together today to share the celebration with each other. But I'm glad that we can come together via virtual Zoom networks. Um, this is really an honor for me to walk in the footsteps of the 41 individuals receiving this award before me. So many very strong leaders who've accomplished so much. And as I look back on my 30 year career, uh, I would not be here today if it weren't for the contributions and support of so many people. And so I'd like to dedicate this uh, few minutes of fame to recognizing those who've um, contributed to my um, career and uh, who have supported me uh, for many, many years. Uh, and the first two individuals that come to mind are my parents who are no longer with us today. They have been throughout my whole life a uh, rock of support. And it's unfortunate that they are not here to see me achieve this great accomplishment. Um, in my education, several individuals who stood out and taught me discipline and to enjoy learning uh, physics and math. The late Gay Nixon, Richard Nixon's spunky sister-in-law, was my math teacher through high school. Professor Maurice Stewart uh, taught me the joy of physics and Dan Moberly, my professor, um, another professor of mine at Willamette University, saw that I was a bit of a lost cause and encouraged me to join him at Argonne National Laboratory to do research. 
Dr. Helen Caldicott was a tipping point in my career, and I often ask people to share their stories about how they got to where they are now. Uh, Dr. Helen Caldicott showed me that uh, there were opportunities for energy efficiency in helping to change the world. Tom McNeil and Motrio Cambry Rowey Row at Snohomish County PUD saw this young fledgling and gave me an opportunity to enter uh, the field of commercial energy management. And moving on to Tacoma Power, Deline Moore was always a support and encouraged me to get involved in AEE and to take the certified energy managers test. The late Al Tuman and, and the great Wayne Turner were my instructors for the CEM so many years ago. And I can't say enough about how uh, that initial contact with those two and my um, gaining the CEM has helped me throughout my whole career. Dan Moberly was an amazing business manager at Kent School District who showed me creative ways to finance energy efficiency projects. And Bill Younger, who has been my mentor and friend for many, many years, uh, helped me through the next three steps of my career, uh, from King County to Puget Sound Energy to landing my current job at Seattle City Light. Uh, Bill has been instrumental. He uh, engaged me in creating the AEE chapter and has been uh, somebody whose shoes I've tried to fill many times. So thank you, Bill. Uh, for the AE women, Marianne Lauderdale, Lori Wigan Jackson, and Ruth Whitlock. I can't say enough about how your friendship and your support has helped me throughout these many years. And I wouldn't feel good if I did not acknowledge the late Shirley Hansen for her friendship to me. Tim Janos, Bill Kent, and the AE board, you've been wonderful to work with. Um, I've learned a lot from all of you and I've appreciated your support. And of course, all of you AE members, I, I really do miss seeing you in person and hope you are all doing well. I'd like to also thank my boss, Craig Smith at Seattle Sea Light. He's been a great mentor and has fully supported me in the past several years of being engaged in AEE. And my team at Sea Light make coming to work worth it and my brother for being the person I always tried to keep up with, uh, for teaching me to fish and to apply drywall. And last but not least, I'd like to thank Div. You may know him as Rookie Bobby, uh, but this is a very special person in my life and I'm looking forward to spending the rest of my life with him. He is a rock. Thank you, Div, for all that you do to support me. And again, thank you for this recognition. I hope that all of you can move forward with such great support behind you and find success in your career. Thank you. Mwah, Lori, thank you. What a wonderful, wonderful person you are and what a wonderful time we've had together. Um, hey, the sun's up, let me show you my view and then I'll close the ceremony. I don't know if you can see it, Oh, but it's just beautiful out here. It's just beautiful out here. And I'd like to tell you that as soon as I get done with this, I'm going to take off my tux and go surfing. I'm not that cool. I've actually got some some um, energy efficiency, energy efficient motors to work on. But other than that, I want to tell you all, first of all, thank the people who put this together. Staff, AE staff, Jeff, wonderful job. Really, really wonderful. I've been to a bunch of these and this is really, really, thank you so much. But uh, I do want to mention all of you the uh, call for papers or call for applicants will come out in January of next year. Nothing you're doing, let me turn that around, everything you're doing is changing this world. Don't ever feel like the project you're working on is too small, too boring, or anything. Uh, as, as all of our award recipients showed, AEE still is a family. It always will be a family, and we're all changing the world. And I want to congratulate all the award winners, congratulate all the people who applied for this wonderful, wonderful global award. And I'm gonna close out my side of the award ceremony right now by turning it back over to Jeff. Thank you all very much. And I'll see you next year, maybe in person. Thank you. All right.
Carl, that was incredible. Thank you so much. I was over here taking notes. You were hilarious as well. <laughs> the comedian. Like, he's killing it. Uh, and I love the view. You might not be going surfing today, but uh, I'm going to be at your door in like five minutes. So I might jump in there. A beautiful view. All right. Hey, once again, congratulations. Let's spotlight some of our winners. Arthur Rangel, I believe you're still here with your webcam. Give us a wave. Arthur, yes. Oh, Arthur is just noticing. Hey, there he is. All right. Oh, okay. There he is. Arthur had a couple second uh, reaction there. We got Emily. Emily. Yes, Emily Thorne, congratulations. Woo! I love that. I can hear the applause all the way here in Las Vegas. Uh, we have Saqib Sajad. I believe he's still on. Give us a wave. Yes. Love it. Yes. Aaron Lawrence. Aaron, give us a wave. Yes. All right, and Lawrence Fabina. I believe you're still here as well. Lawrence. Yes. All right, and all of our other award winners, congratulations. In fact, you know what? Let's do a quick toast here. Why don't we uh, grab some champagne or a mimosa or some coffee, whatever you got. I went all out, folks. I bought the finest bottle of champagne that I could afford for this event here. Some uh, pineapple barefoot bubbly. Uh, let's do a, a quick toast here. Congratulations, all of the 2020 AE International Award winners. Here's to you and all the other energy gurus making a difference in today's world. Oh, I just, I just drank some confetti. <laughs> That's awkward. All right. Hey, if you have colleagues that couldn't make this award show, maybe it was too early, or hey, you just want to relive the magic again, we are doing this once again at 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. So maybe we'll see you then. Otherwise, have a great day, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Oh, wait. All right.